Hey guys, this is Dr. Samir Islam. I want to thank you for joining me today. Um, tonight, we are going to conclude our series on inflammatory bowel disease. And today, we're going to go on the final topic, which is some of the extra GI manifestations of IBD, which will kind of go over some of the things that may present um, in patients who have an inflammatory bowel disease, in which it may not be necessarily related to the GI tract or things they may not realize that could be associated with IBD. So as a summary, you know, to, think, to talk about, to summarize what we talked about before, IBD is considered an autoimmune condition in which you have inflammation of the mucosa of the GI tract that can lead to a lot of different symptoms including bleeding, anemia or low blood count, pain, and sometimes if you have long-standing disease it can lead to cancer as well. There are two main types of inflammatory bowel disease. We have ulcerative colitis and we have Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis is limited to the colon, usually presents with bleeding, and out of the two, it tends to be an easier prognosis and an easier disease to treat. Uh, whereas Crohn's disease can present anywhere within the GI tract, the stomach, the small intestine, or the colon. The symptoms can manifest as pain, diarrhea, or weight loss. And out of the two, this is considered more of a difficult disease to treat than ulcerative colitis. So the way we diagnose ulcerative colitis is a combination of multiple different factors. We have to rule out any infectious causes, including, uh, including uh, a really bad bacterial infection called C. difficile colitis. Sometimes the blood work will help, help us see if you have inflammatory bowel disease, whether there's inflammatory markers seen that are elevated, blood in the stool, or even anemia. Uh, with the help of endoscopy and biopsies, we can see the extent and the severity of the inflammation and also allow us to determine what type of treatments we can put you on. And then imaging may be helpful in some patients who have ulcerative colitis. And this is very similar to Crohn's disease, the same approach in which you must rule out any infection, do endoscopy or an EGD. But I would say in Crohn's disease, imaging is actually necessary to help rule out any other manifestation of Crohn's disease that could be uh, beyond the colon. In terms of treatment uh, for ulcerative colitis, we we Categorize the treatment based on the degree or the severity of the disease and the extent of the disease as well. And then we can see how the disease goes based on our treatment options and also the patient preferences. And this will help us determine what options we have for our treatments. And there are three main classes, the five ASA, the immunomodulars, and, and the biologics. And usually the five ASAs are the first line treatment in which we give for a lot of our patients, which uh, ends up doing pretty well. But for those patients who don't uh, do well on the 5 ASAs, we can go up in terms of therapy to the immun immunomodulators or the biologics. A little bit different from Crohn's disease in which you want to do a top-down approach. You want to be more aggressive with Crohn's disease. Um, the earlier use, use of more aggressive treatments tend to do better for patients who have Crohn's disease. And it also would depend on the location of the disease uh, when you have Crohn's disease, whether it's in the colon, the small intestine, or, or in the stomach, or in the esophagus. Once again, we have to assess how the patients do while they're on treatment, also the preferences. I have some patients who don't want any IVs, and that's perfectly fine. We have other options we can give these patients besides that. And the two main classes for Crohn's disease we have are the immunomodulators and the biologics. And once again, it tends to be more of an aggressive approach. And then once we can get them on treatment and they do well, we have the option of possibly de-escalating therapy. So now we'll talk about some of the extra GI manifestations of inflammatory bowel disease. And these are uh, conditions which occur outside the colon that may be related to the disease process, or at least give a hint that there could be a flare occurring. And these are uh, can occur in some patients, and the, the severity can depend on what exactly is going on within the GI tract. Some of these conditions can parallel the disease activity, meaning it can be a sign of worsening exacerbation and worsening symptoms, or sometimes with some of these patients, they may not even be related whatsoever. But we, uh, we often use these extra GI manifestations as a clinical clue for how the patients are doing. It also gives us and our patients a way to see if they have the possibility of getting worsening disease in the future. So there's two main groups that we think about when we think of the extra intestinal manifestations of IBD. We have those that parallel the disease, so, so it, whenever you have flares of your UC, your Crohn's, you have flares of these extra GI manifestations. Then you have other manifestations that are not uh, parallel with the disease, which, which means it can occur anytime, whether you're flaring or not. 
So big joint peripheral arthritis tends to parallel the disease course. So when you have a lot of joint pain in your hands, in your knees, in your elbows, in your hips, that could be a sign that you could be having a flare. That's usually an indication that something could be going on or has a chance of becoming worse and you may, not, you may need further escalation of therapy. Another extra GI manifestation is a skin condition called erythema nodosum, which is a red, full, red, red painful inflammation of the fat cells, typically within the shins. And this could be a sign of an impending flare from your disease as well. Another extra intestinal manifestation that can parallel the disease are called aphthous ulcers. which are small little ulcers that are seen typically in the mouth uh, or on the lips that have very minimal symptoms but can be a sign that a flare could be occurring. And then lastly, you could have a condition called episcleritis, which is redness around the inflammation, around the whites of the eyes, actually inflammation that's seen there. And in some people, this can present as either mild eye pain or redness. But this can be a sign that the disease could be getting worse, or you could be having a flare, one of the extra intestinal manifestations that tends to parallel the disease course. Then you have uh, diseases or manifestations that don't parallel the disease course. So one of these is a condition called ankylosing spondylitis. And this is when you have joint inflammation of the spine and the pelvis in which the vertebrae are actually fused together and they become almost like a bamboo spine. And so a lot of patients present as back pain. You can also have what's called sacroiliitis when you have, when you have inflammation in the joints between the sacrum and the ilium, which is right where your hips are. This is a connection between the lower spine and the pelvis, and this can present as pain in the buttocks or in the lower back. And this can be a extra intestinal manifestation of inflammatory bowel disease, whether it's Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Or we can have another skin lesion called pyridoma gangrenosum, which are deep ulcers in the leg, typically that can develop into chronic wounds. And this is a little bit different from erythema nodosum, which we saw earlier, which does parallel the disease process. But this is actually deep ulcers on, this, on the legs, which will not parallel how bad the disease is going. So when we talk about the extra intestinal manifestation, once again, you have the ones that parallel the disease and ones that don't parallel the disease. And the ones that do parallel the disease, this can be a sign of whenever your flare is occurring. So when you have, start to have joint pain, start to have these aphthous ulcers on your lips, this may be a sign that you could be having, could be having worsening disease. And like I said before, there are a couple of different arthritis conditions which you can have, including sacroiliitis, ankylosing spondylitis, or peripheral arthritis, which is a process in which you have uh, arthritis at the joints, the big, large joints, which can parallel the disease process. And looking at the eye manifestations from a different picture, we talked about the episcleritis, which tends to parallel the disease process, typically have very minimal pain, if any. But there are other eye manifestations of inflammatory bowel disease, including one called anterior uveitis, which is a um, pretty significant eye emergency. This is where you have intense injections around the iris, which severe eye pain, and some visual changes as well. And this is associated with inflammatory bowel disease. And this is a very serious medical emergency, which does need uh, an emergent ophthalmo ophthalmological consultation. And this is another eye manifestation that can occur in patients who have inflammatory bowel disease that, that does not typically parallel the course of IBD. And some of the skin lesions, like we talked about before, we have pyoderma gangrenosin, which is typically painful and independent of IBD, versus erythema nodosum, which is painful as well, but typically on the shins, but does parallel inflammatory bowel disease. Now, lastly, I want to talk about the risk for colon cancer because this is an important risk to be aware of. And the risk for colon cancer would depend on how long you have the disease, specifically if you have ulcerative colitis. If you have ulcerative colitis uh, for a long time, about 8 to 10 years, you do have a substantially higher risk for developing colon cancer. And those patients, even if you've done well, even if you're doing well and you're on therapy, when you've had disease for that long, you need to get more frequent colonoscopies to make sure that there's not any signs or symptoms of colon cancer. It's very important. There's another, there's another disease which can uh, come with inflammatory bowel disease called primary sclerosing cholangitis, or PSC. And patients who have this condition are at high risk of developing colon cancer as well. And these patients typically need to have a colonoscopy done at least once every year 
to make sure that they don't have any lesions in the colon that could lead to colon cancer. So in summary, we have extra intestinal manifestations that can parallel the disease, and we also have ones that don't parallel the disease. The symptoms can vary depending on what's occurring and what symptoms you may be having, and if, and if you're having a flare. And if you do have a extra intestinal manifestation that does parallel the disease, and you're actually having those currently, or, or, or there could be becoming more and more frequent, this may be a sign that you could be having impending, worsening a flare of your inflammatory bowel disease. And more often than not, we have a lot of our patients who use these as a sign of when they may be needing further therapy for their, for their disease process.